to uh, to uh, search webinar webinar series. Um, we usually have a lot of what uh, of these series actually in our stage, and I'm actually um, uh, taking this from our stage um, as we officially reopened um, our stage to do project specific work during um, during these times. So I um, hope everybody's safe and healthy. We have a full protocol uh, for doing work uh, at our stage now. Um, and so if research uh, needs the use of our equipment, then we are we are ready to uh, to uh, work with the industry partners out there for it. Um, we the press precipitous of this of this uh, seminar or this webinar and and really a discussion in Q and A um, is around the the great funding that is out there both uh, from uh, tax credits from CRA, TRED, but also NRC IRAP, which CERT has worked closely with. We get a lot of questions um, on funding and, and how industry can leverage um, the federal money for R&D efforts. Um, and so we're very fortunate to have Ahmad, John, and Mustafa on this call to step through um, their world. What does what does funding look like? Um, and then uh, have a very open Q and A so that you leave today's session. Um, with a better understanding of um, of what is available as you innovate, as you do research and development, and uh, continue to, for the growth of your company um, for it. We had a short little video at the beginning, um, which resides on our YouTube channel. So uh, if you want to learn more about CERT, if we don't know you already, then um, please go over to... Uh, to our YouTube channels, our social, um, and you'll see a lot more activity um, coming up now that uh, we we can film inside of our stage versus us sitting at home at our desk um, doing research. So um, just some logistical stuff. This is uh, WebEx events. Um, there is a Q&A section on the right-hand side of your interface. So please um, put any questions um, down there. Um, we will summarize them. I'll be looking at it uh, just in case if it's a just-in-time question that can be answered by Ahmad, John, or, or Mustafa. And then after uh, each speaker, we'll open it up uh, to, to go through those, uh, those questions. Um, I'll read them if you can type them out versus everybody uh, joining in. I'll read them out to the respective uh, panelists here, and we'll engage in a, in a great conversation. Um, Ryan, let's just go back to the agenda. And so, um, so we're going to step through uh, with Ahmad and John uh, from some CRA to talk about Shred, the wonderful world of Shred, and then um, Mustafa from NRC IRAP, um, and then we'll wrap it up uh, with uh, with a thank you for for all the panelists, and hopefully this will generate more discussions post, um, and also to reach out to. Uh, the respective folks here with any additional questions, and then of course, um, how CERT can help you with your uh, R&D needs um, for it. So, um, so why don't I now then uh, switch over to uh, now introduce Ahmad and John from CRA Shred, and I'll turn it over to uh, to Ahmad. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope uh, everybody can hear me. Uh, thank you, David. And um, I hope everyone is doing uh, well in these un unusual circumstances. Uh, today we have a, a short um, presentation to provide the, uh, a better understanding of the SHRED program. So I'm going to go over the uh, um, basic requirement, then I'll go over the technical uh, aspect of the program, then I'll turn it over to uh, John to explain the uh, financial aspect, and then we'll take questions after. Um, so this is, uh, next slide, please. Um, so what's the uh, objective of the SHUT program? Uh, this is the... Uh, well, to encourage Canadian businesses to do uh, research from all sizes, all sectors, 
uh, even uh, one person, individual, can uh, apply for this program. Um, this is the largest federal program to support R&D in Canada. Uh, every year, uh, the Fed provides approximately $3 billion of uh, uh, in tax credit, uh, and we process close to 20,000 claims every year. Uh, what the program offers, 15% uh, uh, or 35%, depending on what type of company you, uh, you have. Um, so if it's a Canadian controlled private corporation, you get 35%, that could be refundable. Uh, if it's a publicly traded company, it's a 15%. Um, that's not refundable. The expenditures can be used to reduce taxable income for the current year or carried carry forward indefinitely. Okay, basic requirements. Um, the claimant must be carrying on a business in Canada for the uh, tax year. So it has to be, uh, the project has to be conducted in Canada in order to uh, qualify. Um, the uh, shred, the project must be related to the claimant's business. And the reason for that, we want the claimant to, um, um, to use the uh, result of that project to benefit from the uh, uh, project itself. The expenditures must be incurred. Uh, and the shred must be performed in Canada by the claimant or for the claimant. So if you hire a contractor to do the work for you, that qualifies, uh, would be eligible as well. Also, there's a deadline to file a claim, which is uh, 12 months after the filing due date. Uh, filing due date is six months after the taxation year end of the company. So uh, six months plus 12 months you have 18 months to file a uh, shred claim. And this is a strict deadline. Now let me talk about the technological aspect of the program. So for any development work <clears throat> to qualify for the tax credit, it has to meet the definition of uh, SRED. Uh, and it is defined in the Income Tax Act. The definition tells us how the work was done and why it was done. In terms of how, the work must be a systematic investigation. Uh, it means um, it has to follow the progression of work. Like first, you have to determine what the problem is, uh, then come up with an idea on how to resolve that problem, do some testing and then analysis, and come up with the conclusion. This process we call systematic investigation. So the work the project has to be to follow that type of uh, uh, investigation. So it has to be carried out in the field of science or technology by means of experiment or analysis. And why? For the advancement of scientific knowledge, that's basic or applied research, or the technological advancement, that's experimental development. And by the way, 95% um, of the claims that we received are in the experimental development uh, type of uh, project. Okay, what work is SRAD? You have to ask the question. Um, did you resolve or attempt to resolve a scientific or technological, technological uncertainty? The, the key word here is achieving or attempting to achieve. So if you, when you run into a problem, uh, if the current technology um, uh, has limitation that um, is not allowing you to resolve the issues. Uh, that means there is some technological uncertainty. If you use the current technology, available technology to you, uh, to resolve the issue and you are able to, then there would, wouldn't be a technological uncertainty. That would be a, a technical problem uh, that you benefit from the available technology to you to fix it. So that wouldn't be a shred. Now, the second question is, uh, did you add to your existing knowledge base? And that's very important. I mean, the whole uh, uh, the, the core of the program is to add to, a knowledge, to the knowledge base of the company. Now, of course, the type of uh, work is 
um, would be basic research, applied research, or experimental development. The basic research is usually conducted by a research institute, um, and uh, the whole idea is there is no application in view. When they work on a project, uh, a basic research, there is no application in view. So, I mean, if they are, let's say, investigate uh, a research institute is investigating a, a, um, a virus, uh, they just do an investigation. They don't have anything uh, planned as application for that. The second one is applied research. When that research institute is working toward um, creating or uh, producing a vaccine, so that there is an application there. The third is uh, uh, experiment development. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this, like any material, any process, any product that falls into that category. So, next slide. Okay, so there's some work that usually or um, normally is not eligible for SRAD, which is the support work. Uh, but it, is, it would be eligible if that support work, uh, there are eight categories of that at the bottom of the slide. So engineering, design, operation, research, all those are not uh, eligible for SRAD unless they are in direct support of the uh, SRAD project. And that's why we call them um, let me, support. Uh, otherwise, if they have nothing to do with the uh, SRD project, then they would not be eligible uh, as expenditure. And again, this is uh, um, defined in the Income Tax Act. The next, there are some um, expenditures that are not eligible that I excluded, which is next slide, excluded work. Uh, which makes sense, you know, market research, uh, sales promotions have nothing to do with um, advancement of technology. Routine testing, routine data collection, um, research in social sciences or humanities, different programs support these type of research, but not the this shared program. Uh, again, this one is um, defined in the Income Tax Act. So this yeah, thanks, Ryan. Uh, next slide, I'll go past. Yeah, uh, this one is an illustration of what is the R&D process look like? Uh, what does, does it look like and the SRD um, project? So you notice that the R&D process includes the concept, visibility study, functional requirements, detailed design plan, project, uh, uh, project plan. Uh, and including the development phase and testing and analysis, right? But the shed project starts where you start running into technological uncertainty. And this is where you start develop the development phase and you start running into the technological uncertainty, um, you know, unable to uh, fix a problem. So this is where you start coming up with ideas on how to resolve it do the analysis and then testing and at the end of that um, this is the end of the SRD project um, so basically the beginning of the uh, shred project is where you start running into the technological uncertainty and the end of the project this is where either you resolve the, the uncertainties or you de determine that the idea that you followed, or the path that you followed, is not going to lead you anywhere. And so this is the end of the SRD project. <laughs> Next slide. So in order to help you in filing a successful claim, we do have, uh, we provide free services and tools. Uh, the first service is a first-time claimant advisory service. Uh, this is a mandatory service that we provide. We basically um, go visit you in your place of business. Uh, well, these days we're not uh, using the in-person. We're doing that uh, by calling. 
Uh, so we provide you with better understanding of the program. We provide you with recommendations for future claims. Uh, and uh, so pretty much uh, most first-time claims receive this service, unless there is a high risk. Uh, and this is where it follows the regular uh, process of review. The second service that we provide is called pre-claim consultation. Uh, this is, uh, again, a free service. It's an on-demand service. You can request it. Uh, on our website, uh, there is a link where you can uh, fill out the form and request that service. Again, we uh, send somebody out to your business. You explain what you're trying to do in your project. That's before you start filing a claim. And then uh, they will give you guidance. And will uh, at the end, you will receive a, a binding Termination report saying what you're doing is shred or is not shred. So, uh, and this is very, uh, as I said, popular service that we provide. Uh, the uh, third one is, you know, inf information seminars that we provide and webinars as well. Um, the last one is self assessment and learning tool. Uh, those are two PDF files that you download to your uh, desktop and you, it you follow the process of um, if, if the filing of a claim uh, from uh, determining what the uncertainties are. Basically, uh, one PDF file for the uh, technological um, aspect of the program, the other one is financial aspect. Uh, at the end of you, the filing those, or completing those PDF files, you will receive a report. This report will help you um, completing the forms required to file a um, shred claim. Um, I'll stop there. I'll pass it on to uh, John to explain the financial aspect. See you, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for having us this morning and letting us talk to you a little bit about the SHRED program. Uh, as Ahmed mentioned, the SHRED program is, is the, the largest uh, research and development program in Canada offered by the federal government. Uh, it's generally associated, because we are CRA, it's generally associated with, with income taxes and uh, the main vehicle for filing a T661 claim is a, an income tax return, whether it be corporate or uh, on the individual or the sole proprietor level. But uh, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Um, as, uh, as I'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, you'll see the advantages to why we do it in, in the corporations. Can I have the next slide, Ryan? Thank you. Uh, before I start talking about the financial aspects, of j just a little background on what the uh, of, of of how the claim works. The, the the main form in the claim is the T661 form, and you can find that with any uh, find it any any all, all our forms for Shred are found on the in the Shred section of the Canada.ca website under Business Taxes. Uh, which will divert you to the CRA portion of the website. Uh, the T661 form is divided into two parts, two major parts. One is to describe the, the technological work that you've uh, done in the year, and the other part is the financial part, which quantifies the work that the eligible work that's being done. When you're filling out the T661 form, the, the first question I'm going to ask you is the method by which you want to report your shred expenditures. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll get to this, I'll explain the shred expenditures in a minute. Uh, they're asking for a traditional or a, or a proxy method. Depending on the type of business you have or the type of research that you're doing in the year, uh, the, the election of a method is extremely important. Uh, the two methods that you, you have to choose from are the traditional method uh, and the proxy method. The traditional method, we, we talk about more in traditional overhead terms uh, with respect to accounting uh, and, the, and the concept of overhead and accounting. Uh, these are generally reserved for large manufacturers in the world. Uh, if, you, if you look in Canada, uh, all all corporations can make a claim in Canada almost as long as long as they're they're taxpayers. So, you know, Bell and and uh, Nokia, the the big guys in the world, they they file shred claims each year, as well as the the small one man companies do, uh, as Ahmed indicated. 
The proxy method is the other method of election for the T661, and this is a little more friendly for smaller companies that are doing R&D that are labor-based. So when I say labor-based, they have uh, quite a few employees doing R&D. So that's going to provide an additional 55% of qualified expenditures, which in turn is going to generate uh, additional refundability if you're, a, uh, if you're a refundable corporation in Canada, for example, a Canadian controlled private corporation. Can I have the next slide, Ryan? Thank you. Uh, the five, these are, what you see on the screen here are the five shred expenditures that you, you incur in the year in your shred projects. So salaries and wages of directly engaged employees, materials consumed or transformed in performing shred, contract expenditures performed, uh, third party payments and overhead and other expenditures. And, and we just mentioned the traditional method, to, uh, this would come into play. By far the most common expenditure for shred claims in Canada are salaries and wages. And this is accomplished by, uh, by hiring people, uh, hiring employees to, to work in the companies and, to, and, and to, to delegate them to perform R&D of the year. Uh, simply put, a salary would be is equated to if somebody receives a T4 in the corporation for the work that they do. Materials consumed is anything, any materials that you're using in your shred projects that uh, by you, that you're using up that during the process that are are useless at the end. The corollary of that is what we call materials transformed, and this is what we generally refer to when we talk about prototyping. If you're doing research and development and you're prototyping a, a product and performing testing on it, we will allow for the materials that you use to construct uh, that prototype for, for the shred testing, and we will allow it as a qualified expenditure. Contract expenditures for shred are exactly what you what you would think. This is when you, you go outside to a third party to perform some of the work for you as part of your shred projects. Generally, we look for uh, an actual contract in place or a statement of work. Uh, we look at invoicing and that type of thing that, uh, that, that the, the shred contractors would provide to you uh, for the performance of the shred. The fourth expenditure, you see there's a third party payment and this is a specialized contract expenditure uh, with respect to shred. It, the third party payment involves uh, your company working with what we call an eligible research institute. And an eligible research institute, uh, they're, they're listed on the CRA website, is, the, is you'll enter into a specialized agreement with, a, with a, for example, a university or, or a community college. And, they will, and the, that institute will perform sh the shred as part of your project and, uh, and you will pay them uh, for whatever the agreed amounts are. It's a specialized contract in the sense that the, third, the eligible research institute will also share in the intellectual property that are sharing the results that are generated, and they don't be, they're, not, uh, they're not held exclusively for you. The advantage to this is there's an additional Ontario shred tax credit available for companies that enter, enter into third-party payment arrangements with, with eligible research, research institutes. And uh, what I will do is I'll touch a little bit of it, I'll touch a bit on the uh, the provincial shred side uh, right at the end of this, uh, towards the end of my presentation. Overhead and other expenditures, as I just indicated, it's uh, it, we allow for shred portions of overhead that were indirect expenses that that are incurred when you're performing the work in your shred projects. Uh, the note at the bottom there is that we talk about some salaries inside of maybe allowed for outside of Canada. Absolutely. It is a global economy out there, so we do have some provisions in place to allow uh, work or, or, or salaries incurred by the, by the employees of the company and, and the employees of the shred projects to be claimed uh, outside of Canada. Otherwise, uh, one of the main criteria for, uh, for shred is that the work has to be performed inside of Canada. Thank you. Next slide, Ryan. Just to, uh, I already touched a little bit on the traditional method here. Uh, 
labor as a labor is by far the most common shred expenditure that you will see uh, almost all shred projects and all claimants uh, have a portion of labor involved whether it be salaried employees or uh, they go uh, outside to third parties uh, for sub, for shred subcontracting as part of the traditional method, we will also allow, if you, if you like this on the T661, we will allow you a portion of, of some of the expenses you see there, uh, employer share, share of deductions at source for payroll, uh, utilities, maintenance of shred equipment, and various supplies that are used in the, in the shred uh, work. Okay. Next slide, Ryan, please. In addition to the federal component, which as Ahmed indicated, if you're if you're a Canadian controlled private corporation or you're privately owned and controlled in Canada, for example, uh, we do recommend in terms of gaining the most benefit from the program that you do uh, incorporate a company. So, if, for example, if you if you have an idea and uh, you want to research it and you want to take advantage of the uh, of the uh, tax credits that are available for Shred and and for Canadian controlled private corporations, those are, those tax credits are generally refundable at 35%. So you'll receive a 35 cents back on each dollar that you spend for shred. Uh, what we do recommend is uh, the incorporation into a company because that will also allow you to uh, access to provincial income tax credits or investment tax credits for shred as, as well as the federal program. Each province in Canada and the Yukon Territory have a provincial sh uh, shred ITC program. In Ontario, we have three uh, tax credits available for companies that perform shred. We have the Ontario Innovation Tax Credit, which is an 8% refundable tax credit for companies uh, that are uh, based on their qualified expenditures. We have a non-refundable tax credit, the, the Ontario Research and Development Tax Credit, which is a 3.5% tax credit uh, based on qualified expenditures, but it's, it's, it's uh, available for use when you have, when you're taxable in the year, when you have uh, income taxes to be paid in Ontario. And lastly, as I Excuse me, as I mentioned, there is a third tax credit for third party payments, which is one of the five shred expenditures. And this is called the Ontario Business Research Institute tax credit. It's a 20% tax credit for the amount that you pay to one of these eligible research institutes in which you enter the research agreement, uh, completely refundable, and uh, provided that the, the work was in support of your shred program. So. In uh, Ontario, the, the federal government, uh, CRA, administers all the provinces for SHRED for, their, for the ITC benefits, except with the exceptions of uh, Quebec and Alberta. They, Quebec and Alberta both uh, administer their own corporate income tax, but the CRA administers Ontario corporate income tax. So when you make a claim in Ontario to for SHRED and what happens is the, the refundability is, it comes in one check for both the federal portion and the provincial portion. So, and that's part of what I do. How do you make a claim? Very simply, as I'd indicated, the, there, there's two schedules you have to file for a corporation. The form T661, which has the technical write-up and the project descriptions and the financial information. And as well, the Schedule 31, which is a calculation of the investment tax credits based on the shred qualifying expenditures. If you're a sole proprietor or an individual, you will still file file a T661 form. The, that does not change. Everything is the same. However, when you're calculating out your investment tax credits, you will file a form 2038 with your with your personal T1 income tax return, and this will calculate out the ITC rates uh, uh, based on your uh, legal status. So, if you have any questions. Uh, please refer to the guide 4088. Uh, it's online and, and it's a very, very good uh, source of uh, information. Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, the website's on the, on the, on the screen there. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to throw it in the chat room and I will reply to you. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, thanks, Samad. Um, there is a question on the, um, <clears throat> from Irene. Can you download the self-assessment and learning tool PDF from the Shred website? Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, uh, can you hear me? I'm not sure if I'm muted or not. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, so yeah, it's uh, on uh, 
the website. There is a link on that on this website that's listed. Uh, it's called Services and Tools. Uh, and under that, you'll find the uh, self-assessment and learning tool, uh, the two PDF files that I mentioned. Great, thanks, Juan. Uh, Mark, well, I'll uh, answer your. We'll ask your question at the end because uh, it's uh, it, it, there's a couple of answers uh, to that around VRAR research funding. Um, I actually have a question. So, John and Ahmad, so if a company is engaged with CERT and we have a couple of levels of engagement to do R and D, um, and so as I understand the breakdown, if it's a pure fee for research is what we call it, uh, a cash statement of work, et cetera, then all the work we do can be shredded by the industry partner. So, so CERT would be the claimant, like so. So you'd be or we would be almost like the contractor for the industry partner. Oh, okay. So somebody yeah. would contract CERT to to help them in the the we'll call them the claimant. Right. Uh, as part of their claim, yeah, absolutely. It, it's uh, that that's an eligible shred expenditure. Uh, it would probably fall under a, a contractor ex, uh, expenditure, and yeah, absolutely, they could they could claim the uh, the amount of work that was in support of their shred project. The shred project, okay. And then and then the second question would be is in support of the shred pro project. They work with CERT, but CERT was able to get additional funding to support the work we're doing. So, but the partner would still do a cash contribution to receive that additional yeah. funding to pay for all our work. The right. only, I'm assuming the only thing that's shreddable would be the cash contribution and where that was allocated or does none of that get have the ability to be shredded? No, the, the amount that the, the amount that the claimant would pay towards cert uh, yeah. for the work being done is fully shreddable. Uh, what the, what happens on the cert end, whether the, yeah. whether you receive funding for it, is independent of the claim. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're, you're, we're talking from a claimant to a contractor relationship here. In this case, cert. Uh, yeah, and that's all we would look at. Okay, great, great. Um, if folks have any more questions, please put them in the uh, the Q and A, uh, and we'll get them we'll get them answered. Um, thanks, John. Uh, thanks, Amant. Um It's always good to get a little deeper understanding um, on the shred process and also to see the available resources, including uh, the ability to actually uh, uh, have, a, have a virtual site visit um, for the industry partners. So um, I'm going to turn it now over to Mustafa um, from NRC IRA app. We've been working closely with the staff over the last bunch of years um, on a very concerted effort on, on, on NRC IRAP for the support of the screen industries. Um, and it has been a, a very focused effort uh, both, from both sides to ensure that the funding that is available for innovation uh, for the small and medium enterprises um, can be accessible by uh, our community. So. I now introduce it to Mustafa. Thanks, Mustafa. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dave, and uh, thank you. Good morning, everybody. I am Mustafa Jaffer. I work for NRC IRAP. I work from the Markham office, and I'm also the ITA responsible for CERT. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to go over NRC IRAP. National, NRC stands for National Research Council. And IRA stands for Industrial Research Advisory Program. The IRA program is part of NRC. Who, who we are, what we do, how do we serve SMEs, and how to become a client of uh, NRC IRA. So NRC's mandate is basically the government has mandated NRC to stimulate wealth creation in Canada through innovation. So we have basically innovation centers within NRC that are working with digital technologies, photonic technologies, um, health uh, technologies, transportation technologies, construction technologies. You, you must be hearing from the press that uh, recently NRC put in a big lab in Montreal dealing with the current uh, COVID or the pandemic situation where we are developing 
vaccines. The scientists are doing research on developing vaccines. But the model here is that we develop this innovation and we pass it on to the SMEs who further take it to commercialization. So our mission, IRAP, in the Industry Research Advisory Program of NRC, is to assist SMEs to accelerate the growth by taking the innovation that they are working on and successfully commercializing it. That's the role of IRAP is to help accelerate. And I'll be going through how uh, we achieve this. And our vision is to be the most impactful program of this kind in the world where Canadians uh, can thrive globally and uh, within Canada through commercial success. Next slide, please. So we are cost to cost. We have research centers, cost to cost, and we have facilities, uh, cost to cost. We have IRAP offices across all the provinces and the territories. Uh, we are above now close to 300 professionals uh, working in more than 100 uh, communities. And ITA is an industrial technology advisor whose mandate is to assist SMEs. Uh, next slide, please. So what we do is we support the needs of the small, uh, medium-sized uh, enterprises who are engaged in innovation, technology-driven uh, activities. So really, they are working on technologies that they want to take this piece of innovation, develop competitive products and services that can be commercialized in the marketplace. That's uh, the difference between us and the shared program is commercialization. We have to work with companies that want to successfully commercialize their technology. Next one. And how we do this is we have the expertise in validating your ideas or we have access to, for, for example, the, uh, the classic uh, case in point is CERT, where we have a lot of uh, film and content generation companies. And if you want to validate uh, your ideas, we fund certain portion of uh, CERT where you can bring your ideas to CERT and at IRAP's expense, validate your ideas. Uh, we also provide uh, advisory services on technology, on commercialization, because collectively our expertise of uh, 300 people brings a wide, diverse expertise in technology, in uh, marketing, and our research centers, and we also have uh, access to regional innovation centers where uh, we have the expertise built in the institutions and in the regional innovation centers that can assist uh, SMEs. And we also promote networking between SMEs where SMEs can get together and as a combined as a force be bigger and share in the innovation and uh, develop the uh, products, and we also assist companies to market these products internationally, and we can assist in financial assistance, uh, and I'll be going over this, which is non-repayable if uh, uh, needed for the SMEs. So here's our uh, history. We, we have been around for past uh, 70 years. Uh, we disbursed about $300 million of funding to assist SMEs, and we have given about 8,200 8, advisories uh, for, uh, to SMEs. Next slide, please. Okay, and uh, so this is the uh, last year data. As a result of the IRA program, we were able to generate about 15,500 jobs and we also supported uh, about 1,300 youth uh, opportunities where fresh grads from universities were funded 
through IRAP to be able to get a start in the first job. And we also do assessments on behalf of uh, various uh, government departments because of our uh, technical expertise, and we were able to do about 1,350 assessments last year. That's there. So this is our business model. Uh, towards the left is our funding model, how we assist on the, a, a, the SMEs, and on the right is our advisory model. Both are available uh, through, uh, through IRAP ITS, the Industrial Technology Advisor, and really they are designed, so it's a, so when a company comes to IRAP, they are assigned, and, and if the company qualifies, I will be going through the qualification criteria, a company is assigned to an industrial technology advisor, and there is a trusting uh, relationship established between the industrial technology advisor and the company where the strategic roadmaps and everything is uh, known between the two parties, and then the ITA determines a plan on how to assist the company's uh, innovation objectives, and this plan is followed through by either funding or advisory services. Next slide, please. So let's go through some of our funding programs. Uh, the first program that we have is what we call the IRAP Core, and uh, this is where we assist uh, organizations with uh, funds to help them accelerate their innovation, get it quicker to the marketplace. Uh, the way we assist this is we, we help fund the hands-on labor to do R&D. So it's only straight salaries, all the employees, just like uh, the shared program, they have to be a T4 employees. And in case the company uses contractors, uh, uh, they have to be uh, Canadian uh, contractors. So the way our funding model works is we fund about 80% um, of the salary, uh, straight salary, no overhead, no benefits, and 50% uh, of the contract costs. Okay, so that's our core program. It's uh, very popular. There's uh, several versions of it. One is called the ARP version, Accelerated Research Plan, where there's a limit of 50K. Uh, we allow some kind of feasibility market study. And then there's the main core program where a company has a formal project that they want to take it to the market and where we could fund them. The second program, which is just was just launched in response to the pandemic was the innovation assistance uh, program to startups. Uh, so startups uh, have employees, they are relying on venture capitalists, uh, uh, personal funding, angel funding. So in order for this pandemic uh, uh, situation, uh, uh, it was the government decided that uh, they want to give a helping hand to help the startups survive this pandemic pandemic solution, so this program was launched to assist uh, uh, this category of SMEs, and uh, right now it's coming to a closure uh, because now the government is moving to the CREB uh, program. Uh, the next program is the Youth Employment Program, which is very popular program, is where we assist the uh, uh, fresh grads from universities. Uh, basically, if the company hires uh, fresh grads from universities and keeps them for about six months, they should be legally qualified to work in Canada, uh, either being a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident or some other form where they're legally able to work in Canada. Uh, usually, there's about $30,000 contributed by us to help them to achieve the experience, and the grad has to be there for about six months. Uh, the next program we have is what we call the contribution to organization, like CERT, 
you know, where we make a contribution to CERT and then CERT assists SMEs in basically what you saw in the beginning of the video where if you have an idea or if you want to validate your production workflows or things like that, then uh, that's something that, uh, uh, that can be supported. And then we have our international program, which is uh, supporting SMEs to collaborate with uh, international partners in China, India, Brazil, and Korea, which is called the CIIP program. And then we also have the Eureka Eurostars program, where we encourage con contributions between Canadian SMEs and the European partners. And then there is the can export program, which we jointly work with can export where a certain portion of your trade show costs and travel cost uh, reimbursement is is possible. So this is the core of our uh, funding programs. I would also encourage people to uh, visit uh, Global Affairs Canada. They have some programs there as well, where especially in United States, you can uh, uh, go in and uh, go uh, work basically on the incubator side. Okay. So how, how to become a client? We have a process. Usually the first call is to our call center. I will give uh, the number for that. And our call center does the screening of the company and it should meet the following criteria. You must be a Canadian incorporated company and for-profit located in Canada with fewer than 500 full-time employees. And then also you have the desire to improve your innovation capacity. And also you must be open to a trust, trusting relationship with NRC IRA and you have the objective to grow and generate uh, profits in Canada to the development of your commercialization of your technologies. Then your company may be eligible for support. Now, there is a limited pot of funds. Not um, everybody uh, usually gets funding, but we try to cover as many companies as possible. And really the criteria is who has the best case for uh, basically revenue growth and full-time employment growth. So usually we tell our clients that we do not take an equity stake into your company, but what we are doing is we are looking for the, your performance in two parameters, which is revenue growth and full-time employment growth. And after when you get a funding, you have an obligation to report this data to us for the next five years, which is part of our contract with you to help uh, support you. Okay, next slide. So usually uh, once an ITA, Industrial Technology Advisor, has been assigned to you, and let me briefly talk about the, an ITA. An ITA is somebody who has had senior management experience within Canada or, or uh, uh, basically in, in a global market. Uh, they are the highly qualified industry individuals. They've uh, run companies, grown companies, know the companies, so they are, there's empathy with your uh, situation. So the first thing when you have an idea right now, we are not doing any visits because of the pandemic, but usually an idea will visit you, will understand your business structure, your business strategy, what are your long-term goals, what are the technologies, what are the kind of people you have, what is your customer base, how have you performed in the past, uh, what kind of resources, and where are you with your idea. And then the, the ITA will generate a plan with you, with your innovation objectives, and try and get the services from uh, IRAP to help you fuel your growth. Okay, next slide, please. So to contact us, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, go to our website, NRC IRAP, and that's uh, the IRAP, and there is a one 
800 number, 1877 number to reach our call center. Now it's important that you reach our call center because every case is tracked to closure. Uh, you know, the screening, the, the first level there's a screening, and then we also have uh, innovation advisors within our organization that can work if the clients are not that ready yet to be, uh, to get into the full IRAP cohort, the innovation advisors can provide more advice like uh, more sources of funding or seed grants uh, to help you your company take off uh, from the ground. Okay, the next slide. So there is, uh, I regularly get a lot of questions, you know, uh, how do SHRED and IRAP uh, contributions uh, work uh, together? And I'll also rely on my friends from uh, uh, CRA to help me with this. So we already been through the SHRED mandate you know, so I won't talk about uh, that. So what I'll talk about is the IRAP mandate. The, basically, what IRAP, IRAP's mandate is commercialization, successful commercialization of the innovation to generate benefits to Canada in terms of revenue growth, jobs, and intellectual property. Now, there is cases where a project can be eligible for both for SHRED and for IRA. And uh, so uh, the SHRED eligibility is dealt with uh, CRA and the IRA uh, eligibility is dealt with, uh, with IRA, but there is a stacking rule that one must not exceed 75% of uh, support available from different government uh, organizations. So you must keep this in mind, but going through this example, it will tell you that combining SHRED and IRAP, if uh, both conditions are met, could be very advantageous to an organization. So next slide, please. So we already been through the SHRED eligible expenditures. Uh, so I'll talk about the IRAP eligible expenditures. So what IRAP uh, supports, is the hands-on labor to do the, the <clears throat> commercialization of the proposed innovation. So it's only labor only, and if there is contractors only, there is uh, basically 50% of the contractor costs, you know, and uh, so also university can be treated as a contractor. Next slide, please. So again, I've gone through uh, this uh, this slide, so I won't uh, uh, dwell in this. But uh, there's a differentiation between uh, 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 risks. Even in an IRA project, there are risks, but the risks have been identified and have been mitigated. If you recall, that the main objective of an IRA project is successful commercialization. Next slide, please. So let's go through a quick uh, example. Uh, basically, uh, this is an example where we have a, a, a company, a chemical company. Uh, basically, they've incurred about 1,715 hours, and the total labor for those costs is $84,405. IRAP does not support material, does not support capital expenditures, does not support overhead, and they also incurred uh, $15,000 in, in basically subcontractors. So assuming that uh, this company qualifies for both SHRED and IRAP, how will this cost be treated? Next slide, please. So, for example, like the total labor covered for, by IRAP is 80% of the labor cost, which is about 67,524 costs, and the total subcontractor cost 
covered by IRAP is 50% or 15,000, which is $7,500. And the total costs are $75,027. That would be the IRAP contribution for the project based on the duration of the project and the company claiming it on a monthly basis depending on the labor hours incurred. Next slide, please. So the total salaries here were 84,405. Uh, now on the shred side, there is 80% eligibility for, for uh, the contractor, which is $12,000. And the total project cost from the shared side is 96,405 plus the proxy overhead of 55%. So the total eligible shared costs are about 143,000. Okay. Next slide, please. So the here is now where IRAP comes in. So the total labor, we, we already know the total eligible project costs from shared side is about 142,828. And we know that the IRAP uh, uh, support is about 75,027. So the total shared would be re reduced by the 75,000 to give roughly about 67,800. Now applying the credits, uh, so the final shred expenditure would be about 60,194, and about 35% of it is available from the shred side. So the total government assistance now, including IRAP, is about 104,000. Okay. So basically, that uh, kind of. Uh, concludes my presentation. I thought uh, I get a lot of questions every time I see you on how does uh, SHRED and uh, IRAP work together. So I thought at least I would put an uh, example. Now, going forward, just, uh, if you could go back to that slide, please. Uh, just an important uh, uh, announcement in the last budget is uh, so IRAP has been awarded an increase of 700 million over five years, with 100 million in the first year, 150 million per year ongoing, again to assist SMEs. And also, the IRAP limit has been exceeded now to support uh, up to $10 million in, in grants and contributions from from 1 million. We have what we call the large value contribution process to identify companies that can become uh, global players and make a much more bigger contribution to, to Canada in GDP growth and jobs growth. Okay, that's, that's all I have. I'm open to questions. Great, thanks Mustafa. Um, I've got one. How has IRAP, the funding you just talked about, has it been affected much with the additional funding for pandemic support uh, no, for no. innovation? No, that the pandemic, uh, the IAP support has been separate from the IRA project. Uh, what the government determined was that uh, IRA was a very convenient vehicle to deliver uh, this uh, program to SMEs because of our relationships and our infrastructure and before also, we were cost to cost and very close to the uh, to the startups. Hi, this is Ahmad. Uh, I have to thank you, Mustafa, for putting uh, the slides uh, comparing Shred and IRAP. I know I worked uh, with Maria Nicolescu to put together these slides, uh, and John has uh, a lot uh, uh, of input into the example as well. Um, but I didn't think we have to, enough time to do that. That's why I didn't mention it. I'm glad you uh, you brought it up. Um, Thank you. And, uh, I should hope, have, um, I'm sorry, I should have acknowledged uh, your effort as well because uh, I worked with Maria to put together this as well, this material. Good. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, 
you presented it today. Great, yeah, though those those I mean what what was great about those and thank you for both working on those numbers as a as an example is always is always valuable um, on how to break down the funding. Um, okay, so uh, we've got one question from Mark on is there grant funding for AR and VR research and dev specifically? How can we submit and receive funding? So um, I think uh, if it's an Ahmad, if it's research, it's it's research, right? So it does it it doesn't have to be specific. doesn't make a big difference if it's AR VR as long as it meets the shred requirements, correct? That was. Uh, is that a question? Yeah, it's for you, Ahmad. Yeah, as long as long as it meets the shred requirements. Um, yeah. There's no specificity of the area of research. Okay, so. Okay, I'm getting an alert, I guess. Sorry about that. This is an emergency alert that we received. Um, uh, so you, the question is uh, the uh, whether the um, I couldn't understand the question. Uh, yeah, so the question is, is, is from a shred perspective, as long as it's uh, it's it qualifies as research, then the field of research is not. Speci need to be specified, right? It's not absolutely. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's uh, uh, a shred. You know, uh, all sectors, all sizes of companies uh, can benefit from this program. So it's not. There's no specific field that really is excluded, unless it's uh, uh, research in humanity, as we mentioned. Right. Okay. Great. And then. Um, Mark, to answer that question from a, from a CERT perspective, is um, uh, for there is uh, we focus on AR and VR. So engaging us uh, to do the research work, then we would apply for different grants um, <clears throat> to uh, to be able to do the grant to do the work in conjunction with uh, with yourself and with your company, and then. Um, Mustafa, then, um, you know, we have seen um, IRAP support AR, VR efforts, correct, Mustafa, from a funding yes. perspective? Yes, that's, that's correct. And uh, we have several levels of support. We have the, the tax support to validate the idea. And uh, then we have the regular IRAP support. So that, so that comes that comes uh, support for CERT, and then also support between IRAP and the company uh, directly. Great. Where CERT's not in the middle. Um, uh, Mustafa mentioned, um, you know, the the first round of funding um, to address a specific challenge, um, and that's something that's uh, accessible by all technology access centers, so which CERT is, and this is where um, we would engage and get IRAP support for 20 hours of engagement from CERT, plus the use of our stage and equipment, et cetera. IRAP will support that uh, that funding, and then it would be a ca uh, partner would have to uh, put up $250 for that engagement, and we call this an interactive visit. Um, you have to qualify to be uh, an IRAP client, so that means qualify from an SME perspective and the qualifications that uh, Mustafa went through, uh, but this is something, uh, this is a great program for starting your engagement on how CERT can help you with your R&D and innovation, uh, innovation challenges, and then it also uh, starts you down the road with a relationship with, uh, with IRAP and the, and the potential for uh, further uh, engagement with, uh, with IRAP. Uh, we will be having an announcement coming up shortly. We're just in the midst of a of an agreement, uh, reviewing agreement with NRC IRAP. So stay tuned to our social channels um, and our website uh, in the coming weeks, and you'll see some more opportunity, uh, more uh, an announcement between CERT and Sheridan College and 
NRC IRAP um, uh, coming up on a funding avenue. Um, if there's no more questions, then um, first of all, I want to thank um, Ahmad, John, and Mustafa. This is, as, as we have all said, this is, uh, this is uh, lots of questions we get answered. Um, we, ha we, we have recorded this session and it will be available to, for review. Um, and if you want to reach out specifically to the presenters, just let, let us know and we'll connect everybody together. Um, we CERT does a lot of our uh, outreach and our, our information sharing through our social channels. So uh, please uh, hop on one of them um, and you'll see more of these webinars, plus also uh, the activity that, uh, that we are engaged with. So if there's nothing else, thank you very much, everybody, and appreciate it, and uh, have a good rest of the day. Cheers. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mustafa. John, thank, thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Ryan. Bye now.